All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's the time we got to step in the ring with the greatest tag team in podcast history, Just Freaking Wrestling, the JFW Podcast, hosted by Travis Day. I'm Dizzle J. And uh, this week's show, we're going to talk about the, uh, I guess, the two most recent shows that uh, we were able to read, well, not we were able to go to, but we were able to go to one, and you were able to go to the other. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about Powerhouse Wrestling uh, we went to um, last week, and we're going to talk about uh, the SCW Hallomania you uh, went to yesterday. That sounds good to me. Excellent. Um, how how you doing, Jay? Uh, not too bad, man. Work, 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 and obviously lots of wrestling nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, October seems like uh, probably like the most active month uh, for wrestling so far. I mean, if you look at um, indies and WWE combined, well, I think it's because you the W like wrestling just is like Halloween all year long, really. Yeah. If you think about it, you got these amazing characters and these awesome costumes. And then it comes to Halloween and everybody wants to dress up. Everybody wants to go have fun as a family. Indie shows especially are relatively cheap, almost cheaper than going to the movies nowadays. Mm-hmm. I like so, that analogy. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Sometimes yeah. I, you know, I may fuck up, but <laughs> you say some things I, I got shit. some things, man. <laughs> um, well, let's, uh, well, let's dive into Powerhouse uh, since that was the first show we saw this month. Um, we can go over the results of that and everything. But overall, your experience... Um, your experience from this last show, I mean, I mean, how did you feel about the last show? Do you think it lived up to the previous show? Do you, I mean, we talking powerhouse? Powerhouse, yeah, we're talking about powerhouse right now. We're, we're, we're getting right. to SCW a little bit later because with SCW, I mean, a lot of it's going to be like it's coming like directly from your point of view because obviously I wasn't there. Right. Um, you did uh, snap me, uh, you, you know, you kept me updated for a couple of things and everything, so I kind of got an idea what's going on, obviously from the match card. I'm going to have a lot of questions for you too. Oh, that, that's fine. I got, I, I, I wrote notes. Perfect. <laughs> So, but yeah, uh, focusing on Powerhouse right now and everything. Um, I think I think Powerhouse has just been the first show. Really, you know, we we got to know everybody that was mm-hmm. there, and then coming to this show, now we're invested into it. So, I, I, to me, it's it's gotten better. Oh yeah, I think the yeah. last show was great, and this show mm-hmm. was even better. Yeah, and I, and I and I agree with you, and I feel the same way. It's like. It's like, I mean, going into a new show and, you know, nothing against them in any way, like, you always think, you have to wonder, like, what kind of show is going to be put out. Right. You know, what, what, um, you know, what, what kind of company it's going to be, uh, what kind of matches and everything. And, you know, when, when you go into that first show, you're really, you know, you're excited and you're kind of nervous on, like, what's going to happen. And the first show we went to, it, 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 I mean, completely blew my mind about the talent they had there. I, you know, and like, I'm not one to get nervous. Mm-hmm. Okay. That. This is not in my character, but going to those shows is like because we're doing something totally different. You know, we're not just sitting here just talking about it. We're actually experiencing it and calling it almost play by play. The you know the first one we were, we didn't do so well. The second one got a lot better for us to play by play, which yeah. they'll hear here later on today or yeah. tomorrow whenever. Yeah, whenever and, we get posted. And and the thing is, like, so when you look at when you, when you look at the first commentating uh, episode we did. And you see, though, or you not see, but you hear those uh, moments of too much silence and everything. It right. should, it, yeah, it's bad for podcasting, but it kind of gives you an idea about how much we were, like, you know, into what was going on. Oh, that, that I said that on the show, too. Yeah. I was like, I, I'm sorry. I keep getting caught up in what's going on yeah, in the ring. Yeah, that... exactly. And there's, there's just, I mean, like, there's so much action that, that, uh, that these wrestlers had in their matches. It, it almost kind of, like, I almost forgot that we were even podcasting during it because, I mean, like, I was so drawn into what these performers were doing. No, I totally forgot we were podcasting. Yeah. Because I was so invested. I was, I guess the term would be marking out, mm-hmm. or maybe fanboying out from, from <laughs> my from my aspect. But, you know, it was it was a great time. Uh, even, you know, even the guys who were maybe not so just nice guys wanted to talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them walked away from us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a great, it was a great opportunity to not only talk, you know, with the faces of the uh, company, but also the heels and right. everything. Because I mean, regardless if you're a good guy or a bad guy, I mean, like you want your voice to be heard and out there, and it was awesome that they took the opportunity to do that with us. Um, this show, uh, maybe a little bit of our fault, we didn't get there early enough to kind of sit down with more wrestlers. We were able to have uh, two interviews, right, uh, at this show, and they're actually both interviews were for the uh, wrestlers in the first match, which was Max Morrison and Jack Verville. And when, uh, Verville is the one that really stands out to us, even though he lost his first round mm-hmm. comp- in competition. But well, so did, so did Max Morrison. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, like, 
I mean, this was an opening match. You, you guys were both in the tournament. They both lost the, um, you know, their spots last month. But before we dive into, um, I guess the match itself, um, I guess we, you know, we really want. I want. I want them to hear these interviews that we had. Oh right yeah, now. definitely. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's take a listen to the interviews. All right. So we're sitting here with Max Morrison. Thank you so much for sitting with us. I appreciate it. Um. So, we're here at Powerhouse, and you do have a match tonight. Um, you're facing uh, Jack Burville. Uh Real quick, though, uh, for the uh, listeners that we have, they may not know who you are. Can you want to give a like, little background of who Max Morrison is? Absolutely. You know, I'm from up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I originally started wrestling about 17 years ago, and I've made a, quite an evolution from where I started to where I am now. Where I started, they called me the Game Boy. Then I was the Game Boy Max Morrison, you know, incorporating a little bit more of my real life into that. And now it's just Max Morrison. But, um, you know, I spend a lot of time uh, as part of a group up in Michigan. It's called Project Max. I lead the group, you know, we, we set my goals and uh, the rest of the group carries them out with me. And, uh, you know, brings me to where I am now at Powerhouse. I'm trying to set my goal as to be the Powerhouse champion. Um, and, and so far it hasn't worked out well for me, but I plan to turn that around. Yeah, because, um, I, I did, yeah, because last month you, you were in the tournament, um, you, you didn't come up on top, you did take the loss last month. Um, so, could, is that a setback for you? I mean, is that something you may dwell on going into this match where you may not be super focused on? I mean, like, how did that loss last month, like, did it affect you in some way that... Not at all. If you, if you watch the match, I was in control a majority of the time. And being at the hype, Jimmy Shawin is so much larger than I am size-wise, a lot of people were surprised at how well I maintained control. And that's part of my genius. I'm a little bit of a mastermind when it comes to my wrestling in the ring. I can't outforce somebody. I'm not the fastest. I'm not the strongest. But you damn well better believe I'm the smartest. And I'm going to find a way right, to beat a guy. Unfortunately, Jimmy Shawin surprised me with a chokeslam last month. He came out of nowhere. I didn't expect it, but I sure as hell felt it. <laughs> well, your opponent tonight is obviously like a complete 180 from your opponent last month. I mean, I mean, you, you faced you know a powerhouse last month. You faced a guy who's, who's he's a little bit smaller, you know, probably a little bit faster and everything. Like, how do you like adapt, you know, between those two different uh, opponents? See, the good thing about tonight is Jack Reville is also from Michigan, and I've watched Jack Reville for a long time. I know a lot about the way he wrestles. I've studied him. I've seen tapes. I've seen him live. He's very good. So while I can't divulge the details of my plan tonight, better believe I have a plan. And I plan to show Jack Reville that I'm not one to be left lying for one, two, three. I believe it. Well, good luck in your match tonight. I appreciate you sitting down and talking with us. Um, hopefully you get better results than you did last time. Absolutely. Support the project. Buy some merchandise. Check out me on Facebook. Looking forward to it tonight. <laughs> Jack Verville, thank you so much for sitting down and talking with us. I pronounced that right. Jack right? Verville, yeah, you got Verville. it. A lot of guys do Verville, Verville. No, <laughs> Verville, you got right, it. Like, it's not too fancy, it's just it's the name. Not too uh, French. Like, I do appreciate you seeing with us. Yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, give our listeners a uh, background on who you are. Yeah, well, I'm Jack Verville. I've been wrestling up in the Michigan independent scene down in Indiana, Ohio area for about 10 years, 9, 10 years at this point. Um, I, past six years, I've been training hard, hard jujitsu. I'm a purple belt in jujitsu. Do a lot of competitions up that way, so I've got a lot of submission stuff going on in my game. A lot of stuff guys can watch tapes, like Max Morris. I always say he's watching tapes of me. You got to be in a gym to train for what I do, and you got you got to be training these submission holds. And I just I just don't see that with a lot of guys, and um, that, that's why I've had a lot of success lately. Hey, yeah, Jim. So so what brings you down to Powerhouse? Like what what was it about Powerhouse that it's, it's a new talent, new challenge. Um, I've wrestled everybody there is to wrestle in Michigan. I'm going to wrestle them all again. Uh, I just want to come see what's out there, see who's out there, who's the up-and-coming talent, see if any guys want to come to Michigan, try to make some connections out here, and just get more work. That's what it's all about. Well, last month you had a match. Um, you were in the tournament for the heavyweight championship. Yep. You faced uh, the old-timer Jeff King. Yeah. Um, i got to tell you, like Jeff King is one of those wrestlers in this area that I've seen for years. Um and when he put the bear hug on you, it was, it was something that I've seen many times. But 
the reversal you did into the choke. You like that, did you? It, it, yeah. it was amazing because I've never seen anyone reverse that bear hug. Well, I, I, I yeah, I've, I've seen Jeff King not only in this area, he's a Michigan guy too. There's a lot of us coming down here nowadays. And yeah, that bear hug, that's something, I mean, that's a tough submission. It hurts like hell, but that's something I train for. I know the guillotine chokes right there. He's got me with both of his arms around my waist. His neck's exposed. I knew he wasn't going to tap to it, though, so I got him in it, choked him out a little bit, then hit him with a big suplex. His feet went through the ceiling, came down. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. But no, I expected that. I did not expect a lot of what he threw at me. I didn't expect him to hit so damn hard. Um, he caught me, and uh, here we are today. Got Max Morrison tonight. Yeah, yeah, uh, and it was unfortunate that um, you weren't able to take the victory against him. Uh, I would love to see you uh, move further into the tournament. I'd love to fight fight Jimmy Shallon. I think that'd be a, that'd be a fun match. Yeah. yeah. So, so the overall goal here has got to be the heavyweight title, right? You know, yeah, For, yeah. I've, I've wasted you know eight, nine, ten years, however long I've been at this. Um, you know, I'm just coming for the gold anywhere I go because I know I can do it. I could walk in somewhere and I could win the belt and nobody would think twice about it. They, they respect me as champion. Awesome. Awesome. I like the confidence. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, well, good luck to you tonight against Max. Um, I, I think you're going to put a definite challenge up for him, and you know, I can't wait to see that. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for your time. Like it's described, uh, like we talked about in the interview and everything, um, when when Max Morrison faced um, the hype last month, mm-hmm. it was kind of – it was. I mean, it, there, there were two different wrestlers uh, fighting a different like kind of matchup. When you looked at the hype size compared to Max Morrison, it was definitely one side towards. Oh the yeah, hype. yeah, yeah, yeah. So on this match, we get Max Morrison, we get Jack Verbal. I mean, they're the same size. So yeah, I mean, they're roughly the same build. I think Morrison maybe maybe had a little bit more weight on Verville. He says everybody says it wrong anyway. They do. They do. Jack. Has it, has it more? Has a little bit more size on Jack? Yeah, and, and I think I think like when I, like when you went through the entire match and everything, Verbo definitely used like more of um, he definitely used more speed as um in the match where Max I think used more like technical, um, I want to say a little more grappling. And I, I, I believe I believe both of them are pretty technical. I mean, Jack has pretty much had a reversal for everything that's been thrown at him mm-hmm. lately. Even in his loss with the the king, yep. Um, with you know reversing the bear hug, and now he reversed that. What do we call it? The modified cobra clutch something. Yeah, I I call it the ultimate travesty because I created it. But um, yeah, it was a modified. Uh, it was a it was a uh, camel clutch, but you held on like a cobra clutch instead of like a, a traditional camel right. clutch. Which it's a great finisher, and no one does it except for me, and I guess now Jack Verbo. So, I, I will never stop saying it's my move. He he took it from me, but yeah, he. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, the the thing that I love more about Jack than anything is that he has he has a a reversal for almost everything. It's hard to kind of fight a guy like that, right? It's almost like a Dean Malenko esque mm-hmm. man of a thousand moves type yeah. deal. Oh, absolutely, and. The, the way this match ended with that, I mean, that finisher that Jack pulled off. Uh, that, that we had never seen before. No. Devastating. I mean, it, that, I would not want to be hit by it. It looked like it hurt like hell. Mm-hmm. And, again, I'm glad it was Max's face and not <laughs> Dizzle's face. Well, see, and that's the weird thing, too, is, like, when you when you see here, so when you, when, when there's, when the listeners are listening to our show and hearing our commentary and everything, you could hear the impact of that mat. And it's not oh, like yeah. we're right up next to it. Oh, we're in the back. Yeah, we're in, I mean, like, we're far back. You we're know? back like, by the bar. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, like, the impact that these wrestlers have in these matches, I mean, they're intense. I mean, even the chops and thing, you could pre- you could hear most of them pretty clear. Oh, you could feel them yeah. from where we were in some of those chops. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Jack Verbo, he did take the win in this one, which kind of gave him a little redemption for last month. Right. It doesn't get him back into the tournament. But I think it definitely puts him on the top of the list of a potential future, like title opportunity. You know, obviously after the tournament's over, and they do crown new champion. Right. I mean, you got to you got to make plays to make moves, and in mm-hmm. order to get to where you need to be, you have to win. Exactly. And is Max Morrison one of the guys that was on top? We, we don't know. This is only our second show, but the crowd seemed to know who he was. Yeah. So he's been around. Yeah. Um, another fan favorite. Uh, the- Followed that match with Jimmy Jack Daniels taking on Brian Evans. Uh, Jimmy Jack and his uh, 
pre pre match ritual once again. Yep, yep, and and that was a weird thing. Like I don't know what Brian Evans' uh, mindset was when you know you know George Daniels. You know he 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 makes his entrance, but instead of going straight to the ring, he heads straight to the bar, and he grabs his bottle of his favorite spirit. Yep, and. And Brian and Brian's first thought is, I'm going to walk up to this guy, and I'm going to hit him in the stomach as he's drinking this booze, which caused Jimmy Jack to spray all that booze right into his face. Yeah, and I gotta say, I mean, when you look at when you look at Jimmy and everything, he seems like he seems like kind of a happier guy, kind of like you know, easy guy. But I saw a bit of rage when he spilled a little of his booze. Party foul, bro. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, I. I Oh my god! Like I mean, I was a little worried at first because I mean, like there was—I mean, there was an expression that came across his face. Like I mean, like I got chills from it. Like he had that. Uh, I'm gonna kill you because you just made me yeah. waste my favorite drink ever. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if we can name the drink, but it's in his name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, do, do you feel that Jack Daniels would sue us <laughs> if we don't just why just that? Who knows? Well, I just so but yeah, I mean, It'd be too sweet, wouldn't it? <laughs> But Jimmy Jack Daniels, um, he, he took the win and everything. It was a great match. Um, I mean, he he's a he's a big dude. Uh, Brian Evans was no sp- like he was a big dude too. They were pretty much Jimmy Jack is just this big country boy, pretty yeah. much. Oh yeah, it's it's weird because like whenever I see whenever I see like Jimmy Jack Daniels, like I instantly think of like Haystack Calhoun. Mm-hmm. You know, and obviously not as big because I think Haystack was like somewhere like near like the seven hundred pound mark. Yeah, I don't think yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy Jack Daniels definitely ain't that far, you know, definitely. But I mean, like, I mean, it's, I mean, it's the overalls and everything, and you know, it's just like, I mean, the way that um, he has the ability to like, you know, keep the crowd involved, but at the same time, like, get his business, you know, done in the ring. Oh, definitely. I mean, while probably half drunk. Oh, like, definitely. When he drank half the bottle by half the match. Yeah, and I'm going to assume, and like maybe it's wrong for me to assume this, but that can't be his only bottle of the night. I mean, I doubt that dude's waiting until his match to grab that bottle. It's got to be like, hey, I finished this off, let me grab another one, I'll grab it before my next match. Maybe he's like a drunken master. Yeah, and I, I, don't, know if like, you know, I don't know if I should mention this or not, a little behind the scenes, but when the show was over and we got a chance to talk to him, I mean, he was still sucking on that yeah, fucking so, bottle. That thing was that, almost empty. I don't think that thing was uh, left his side after no. the match. No, but I mean, it was a great match. I mean, I, I like Jack Daniels. I, I think, uh, I think a match I want to see in the future would be the hype versus Jack Daniels. Oh, that'd be cool. I think that'd be a great match. That'd be like battle of the super heavyweights. Absolutely. I, I mean, you know, Tim. I'm and, about super heavy, heavyweights for sure. <laughs> Tim, if you listen to this future match right there, hype versus Jack Daniels. Uh, following uh, Jimmy and Brian, we had um, Matt Harmon versus uh, Cougar Hunter Austin Fouts, which was the first time we've seen Austin. It's the first time we've seen him, and uh, he had the. Um, it was weird when he first came out because he kept yelling like, "Where's my monster?" I had no idea what he was talking about. Yeah, nobody had any idea what he was talking about. No, I mean, I was like, I'm seeing like, I mean, at, at first I thought maybe he was talking about Super Destroyer because I mean, like when you think about monsters, there's no monster scarier than Super Destroyer. So I was trying to figure out, like, I'm like, is there like this alliance that we're not knowing about or anything? And you know, I kind of thought that at first, and then the monster appeared. Yeah, and it definitely was not the Super Destroyer. It was not. It was not Super Destroyer one bit. Um, it, it was. It was. A, it was a big dude, though. A big dude. That's big, I mean, like from from our distance, I mean, that was still a big dude. I think he was standing pretty close to that top rope, just standing on the ground. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he yeah he was a, he was a big dude. And what's weird is like. I mean, like, and he, he kind of like had a oh shit. What's that? What's that phrase or that? I can't think of it. But like, remember, like when China debuted with uh, Triple H, and like she really didn't do much. Kind of just went out to the ring and stood there. Yeah, this just, is pretty much what he did. Just his presence. Was... Yeah, yeah, like his demeanor. I'm trying to like his body. I don't want to say body language, but something like that. It's like I mean, he was just there and he was just watching. You know, like he wasn't giving any attention to the crowd. You know, he really didn't get involved too much. He did a little bit. He did a little bit, and it it didn't help in the long run, really. No, no. Harmon did take the victory. Now, Harmon's one of my favorites at Powerhouse. And we saw him last month, the month before, and he was, I think he, did he win last month? He won, He yeah, he beat Oliver Kane. He won last month. So he's advancing in the tournament. I, I think he is one of the favorites. 
I mean, there's so many other like competitors in this tournament that I mean, any one of them can be a champion. It's hard. It's hard because we have said this about a couple different people because it's just like you see these guys perform, mm-hmm. and like holy shit, who's gonna beat them? Oh yeah. Well, when you look at it, so you got you got Matt Harmon, you got Bear Saint Pierre, you got Jeff King, you got uh, Jimmy Shaw and the hype. I mean, these are guys we know that are in the tournament, right? And they had other qualifying matches uh, this evening as well. Um, but Matt, Har- I mean, yeah, Matt Harmon is definitely, I think, out of out of the four. And I don't, like I said, like as we mentioned, we don't know too much about the hype. Right. We were able to talk, you know, to Bear Saint Pierre and the old timer. I mean, veterans in this industry. I don't know how long Matt Harmon's been in it. I'm, I'm assuming. I'm going to assume he has been in it as long as those guys. I think he might be one of those younger guys, like one of those younger faces who could make an impact in the business. Oh, definitely. So, I mean, like when it comes to when it comes to rookie, I can see him and me and Matt Harmon. When it comes to veteran stance, I mean, Jeff King, Bear St. Pierre is there. And honestly, no disrespect to anyone else. Everyone's like kind of right in the middle there, you know, trying to find their veteran status, but at the same time still trying to learn the business. I think Matt Harmon's got that, you know, the maybe the – Rookie, I don't, I don't want to say rookie, the younger yeah. wrestler, but with veteran instincts. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? You know what I mean? He, Absolutely, yeah. He he was just able to counter, able to take on basically two men once the monster got involved, mm-hmm. and still pull off a victory. Yeah, absolutely. I mean he he has he has the ability to be a champion. Mm-hmm. I mean he has the look to be a champion. Um, I don't hear him talk much, so I'm not too sure about the charisma or you know like you know. If he has that to him, but he really doesn't need it if he has the ability to be a champion. You know, I mean the the charisma and stuff. The there were champions that didn't uh, never had it. I mean, you can argue that uh, once again, Dean Linko was not very charismatic. Was okay, you know, he didn't talk a whole lot. Yeah, but he only held like one title ever. But he was also one of the most feared men in the ring. Yeah, but I mean, championship, champion wise, we're like. Well, Chris at, Benoit wasn't that char- charismatic. Yeah, he was. Eh, he was scary. More toothless than aggression. That, that, that's toothless aggression. That, that's that's more like imposing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like. I mean, I can't really think of too many champions that didn't have any charisma to them or anything. I mean, like if you want to look like back in like the early '90s when the Undertaker originally appeared, he really didn't do a lot of talking himself. That's true. I mean, Paul Paul Bear was there to do it for him. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. When you don't need, let's say, you don't really need the charisma if you have the ability to back yourself up and you know the ring being a champion, right? Yeah. Um. So after Matt Harmon took the victory over the Cougar Hunter, which I think we're still trying to figure out exactly what kind of Cougar Hunter he was. I think we figured out what kind of Cougar Hunter he was. Did we figure it out? He had the uh, the pink and. Leopard skin. Yeah. He, he was probably going after, you know, widows and uh, yes. recently divorcees. God, probably. Um, so the next match was the first of four uh, qualifying matches. Right. So we had Sam Knight taking on uh, Nick Melvin. And I believe Sam Knight was either new to Powerhouse I don't remember. One of the guys is new to Powerhouse. And I think, wasn't Nick the homegrown boy? Nick, yeah. Nick Melvin was uh, the Pontiac born uh, wrestler. Sam Knight, I want to say he was new. Um, to, he was new to the company. Like I said, I mean, like, we like we, we really don't know because this is only our second show right. with Powerhouse. So, I mean, there's a lot of history that we have missed that, you know, hopefully maybe we can find some archives somewhere and kind of like figure that out. But. I like Sam Knight because, I mean, like, he just had that kind of personality to him. I mean, he was a hard-hitting dude. Oh, I mean, they both were hard-hitting dudes. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I think Nick had the height advantage, if I remember correctly. Um, again, we don't know much about the past or the history, yeah. so we don't know their background. But it was an exciting match. The crowd was super into it. Mm-hmm. Of course, being on Nick's side, if you're in the hometown, doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, and him taking the win in his hometown. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's got to be almost, you know, as meaningful as any other match that you possibly had. It could it could have been the biggest match of his career for all we know. Yeah, I mean, we could only assume that because, you know, like I said. I mean, he advances closer to that belt. That's right. So, you know, it's, you know, who knows, maybe, you know, down the line, you know, he comes out, you know, he's in that final match, you know, and could possibly win that championship in Pontiac. 
I, that'd be awesome because we'll yeah. probably be there. Oh, I hope so. I hope they want us back. <laughs> <laughs> Not, we just show up anyway. Just right? show up there anyways. Like, hey. uh, Tyler Jones taking on Greg Bannon, the the first uh, part, the first of the Super Beer Brothers tag team uh, in the in this tournament. Yep. So, I it I get. I, I don't know how to explain this. I mean, it was a great match. It was it was a good match. It was everything we we thought, especially from Bannon after seeing him before. Mm-hmm. Hard hitting, you know, concentrate on certain areas of the body to just dismantle Tyler Jones. May have been some outside coaching from Rob Adams. I, I well, you're actually thinking of the encouragement he did. I mean, like. I mean, he was really just outside the ring, like, just kind of, like, you know, cheering him on the whole time. Yeah, cheering him on. Yeah, I mean, a respectful distance from the ring to be able to cheer on, but not to perceive as, like, he was interfering. Uh-huh. So, I mean, he, I mean, it was a hard-fought match and everything. You know, Rob was there, you know, the entire way through. You know, he was able to enjoy that victory with him. You know, that helps, you know, helps Greg move forward in this tournament. So, you know, it was... I mean, I, I, I'm excited for them and everything. I mean, like you know, to see to see my best friend uh, move forward, I'm happy with that. Your best friend now, right? Well, yeah, we're, we're always been best friends. <laughs> you know, I mean, like we've been buddies and shit. You know, like we we go way back to last month. <laughs> to, all the way back to September. All huh? the way back to September, but yeah, BFS. You know, I mean, like who knows? Maybe eventually there'll be you know a new addition to the Super Beard Brothers. Who knows? Well, they gave you a beard a D last time. Yeah, but that's changing. You know, like it's changing. It, it's, you have to build a friendship. You know, it's like you know. I mean, you're, you're, they're, they're, you can be one of two people. You can either build a friendship, you know, from the ground up, or you can just be super nice to somebody so they, you know, just make them feel better about themselves. And that's what they did with you. Oh, that's what they did. That's with That's exactly me. what they did with you. Yeah, like they, 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 they showed me tough love, and they just, you know, kind Coddle, of they coddled, they me. coddled you. Yeah, oh, they okay. gave you a coloring book and you know a piece of pizza and said, "Hey, you're all great." I like pizza, fucking Colin. Everyone loves pizza. Everyone loves pizza. Uh, but following this match, uh, not only did Greg have the opportunity for the turn, but, but also Rob Adams did as well. Yeah, Rob Adams went ahead and fought. Is it Adam? <laughs> we might have been saying his yeah, name. Yeah, but... I think we keep, yeah, we keep adding letters to people. But uh, Rob right. Adam, uh, he faced Brendan Conway. Very metal of Brendan Conway. Very metal. Which, uh, as you mentioned uh, in the show, um, it was kind of a... Um, Kind of like a a way to get some retribution on losing the tag match from last month. Because if I remember correctly, when we were doing the commentating, you you brought up the fact that they lost that title match like a lot, like probably more than needed to be, because you kept constantly reminding people about how they lost the match. Well, and then he lose, turns around and loses the match to Brendan Conway. Well, yeah, but I mean that's because Brendan cheated. What do you I mean, mean Brendan cheated? Brendan did trip him to come into the role, uh, coming back into the ring. I mean, we we all saw it. Because Greg didn't help out in any way. Greg doesn't help out. Greg's out there for moral support, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I wish we did video. Well, we don't need video. We were there. Yeah. We could, we could ask Super Beer Brothers. They'll tell you the same thing. Uh, apparently, we were watching two different shows. Well, I mean, you were probably watching the show. I was too busy doing the podcast. So. Oh. No. I mean. Somebody has to carry us. That's true. And you got bigger shoulders than I do. You need Batman. But yeah, uh, Rob Rob did end up um, taking the loss on it. He's not advancing. Uh, Brendan Conway is. Um, I mean, and just like last month, uh, I mean, he puts on another. I mean, these guys put a phenomenal match. You know, I mean, and it shows. It shows like, you know, for Greg, it even shows for Rob. You know, whether you win or lose or whatever it is. I mean, like it, they prove to everyone that they're able to have you know a, a singles match. You know. You know, without, you know, they don't need to have a tag part of that right. at the moment. You know, it's, so, I mean, they, they get a single kind of competition, you know, they can tag and everything. So, I mean, they're, they're showing people that they they don't have to rely on each other. Right. They they can do it with or without their partner. Exactly. So, you agree there was no, like, funny business whatsoever. No, there was t- totally some funny business. Well, you can't contradict yourself on the show. I'm just saying that they can do it. Don't contradict yourself on the show. I'll do whatever I want. It's our show. That's true. Yeah, touche. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! So where we at now? So we are on the actually the final match of the night, the main event. Saw Jack Carpenter take on Mitch Andrews. 
This wasn't the first time we've seen Jack Carpenter. We saw Jack Carpenter with a different company. I believe it was with Northern Lights. Northern Lights and uh, Godly. Godly, yeah. Godly, Illinois. Godly, Illinois. Yeah, I mean, uh, when we saw Jack Carpenter, uh, last time we saw Jack Carpenter, he was taking on the then Northern Light Heavyweight Champion, uh, the Seaman. Right. I, I believe Jack may be the champion of the at Northern Lights now. I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't really kept up with Northern Lights. Well, I mean, it's it's hard to keep up with a company that doesn't get back to you. So that's very true. That's true. I'll, I'll say it. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it, from what from you know, I was excited when I, we saw Jack be in there because I mean, he did put on a good match. I mean, oh man! I mean, for, besides being kind of dickish to us, he did put on a good match. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's the every man's hero or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, self proclaimed, I guess. But, self self proclaimed. Yeah, but I mean, he, I mean, he, I mean, he has, he has, he has the ability to back up what he says, and I will give him that. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, you know, and you know, I mean, whether you know he, you know, whether he was being dickish to us because you know he thinks he's better than us, or because he was just really busy and maybe we we're bothering him. Either way, I could look past that because his ringing ability, you know, speaks for itself. He's a, he's a tremendous talent, but I mean Mitch Andrews, you know, he, you know, there's nothing to take away from him because no. he put on a great match too. Yeah, but I mean, this one was went back and forth, back and mm-hmm. forth, if I remember correctly, and it came down to Jack just capitalizing on Mitch's mistake. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I mean, yes, I mean, I was I was happy to see Mitch. That was the first time we saw him. Right. Um, I hope to see more of him. It's just like I mean, he. He was, I, it was it was goofy because like a lot of times he wanted to go high flying, but unfortunately with that low roof, right. he couldn't really do a whole lot of it. But you know, he, he did his best to you know get up there and do it. You know, he didn't like let it um, just throw off his whole game though. Mm-hmm. Once he realized it, he adjusted seconds and adjusts on the fly, and just an amazing match all around. Absolutely, yeah. So I mean, it it was great. Unfortunately, you know, he came up short. Uh, Carpenter did take the win. And these four guys, you know, Jack Carpenter, Greg Bannon, uh, Nick Melvin, and Brennan Conway, these four guys join the additional four guys that won last month, and these are the eight that make out the next round. It's going to be interesting. It's, it's going to be incredible. I'm excited to see what these matchups are going to be, who's going to be taking on who. Because as we, as we mentioned last month, the hype did have a lot of harsh words towards Jeff King. That's very true. So I'm, I'm wondering if these guys are going to meet each other in this tournament. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be Tim because these are hard decisions to make. Who do you put against who, and who do you? I mean, mm-hmm. what makes the best matchup for round two? Yeah, if, if I if I if I would if I could pick a match or book a match, I would love to see Greg take on Brendan again. Because I mean, it's be, I mean, this is becoming like you know, like almost a rivalry kind of situation, right? I mean, so I mean, Brendan Conway, you know, he. Helped retain a title against the Super Beard Brothers. He took Rob out of this tournament. I think that if I think that if Greg had the opportunity to take Brendan on one on one, I think there'd be a lot of rage and kind of like pent up frustration that he would take on this match. So, do you think after this match that he had with Rob Brennan um, and Greg was there? Do you think maybe next time Brennan does fight Greg, he's going to ask the Super Destroyer to be in his corner? I'm surprised he didn't ask him this time. I mean, Brennan was a singles competitor beforehand, from what we had gathered. Yeah, but I mean, it, the thing is, like, I mean, it's not that he was just a tag team partner to Super Destroyer for a tag team match. He's one half of the tag team champions. And regardless if you're a singles competitor or not, you should always have your tag team partners back if you know that somebody else is going to be outside. I mean, we, granted, it was just Greg who, you know, is just a guy who out there rooting for his uh, partner. And that's, and that's all he did. It was just. You know, I mean, he might as well just sat in the front row because he literally all he did is just root Rob on the entire time without interfering in anything whatsoever. Again, we have a different opinion in that matter, but the only time Greg got involved in that match is when he got onto the rope and was concerned for the competitors because you mean distracting, not distracting whatsoever. No, no, because remember, like Brendan had Rob up on his shoulders, and I think Brendan looked a little like. You know, woozy for a moment, and Greg just wanted to check on Brendan, not even his own partner, but the opponent of his partner wanted to make sure he was okay. And what does Brendan do? Bump his, uh, bump Rob right into Greg and knock him off the raw. Uh, Let's see, I, I kind of saw it as, uh, 
Greg trying to rescue Rob, and then Brennan using no, Rob no, no. to. So I think we I think what we're both agreeing to was maybe it was an accident by Greg for accidentally hitting or a mistake by Brendan who accidentally hit not Greg off because we can agree that Greg was checking on Brendan for his own safety. That's all it was. The last thing you know Greg would want is for Brendan to accidentally drop Rob because he's a little woozy. I'm just saying it's just wrestlers looking out for themselves. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that's exactly what it was. So anyway. We believe that their next show is November 18th. That's the plan. I mean, that's that's uh, that's what we're looking for. And obviously, we'll keep everyone updated, you know, when the next uh, show comes out and keep them updated. I don't know what you look at me, man. I mean, it's just, we get good. Uh, again, once we start doing a video podcast and these people can see your bullshit, I think they're going to know I'm right. Yeah, but you know that's not going to be true because they're going to look at you like, Jay, you're wrong, man. No. Oh, wow. yeah, Travis, he's a turd. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, but, yeah, uh, guys, make sure you stay focused on our Facebook for the upcoming Powerhouse show uh, coming in November. Uh, yesterday we had uh, SCW Hallomania, which I end up missing because I, I had to work. But luckily you were able to kind of uh, go there. So this is your opportunity to kind of just uh, take the floor. and. Um, oh, I get to take the floor? Yeah, this is all you know. Say, I can... See, you don't know what happened in this show. I can just make up random bullshit. Yeah, I got notes here in front of me, and you can yeah. read them. So, so now you could uh, you can feel what it's like to be Batman now, and I'll just <laughs> I'll just robbing myself over here. <coughs> so far, so good. Yeah, right. You. So anyway, yeah. Last night we went to the show. It started at eight o'clock. Didn't end until eleven. Three hour show. A little bit of an intermission in the middle. They had a Halloween costume contest for all ages. They brought them all up with the kids going around. Actually, the guy I was with, our big red machine, the Fitz, dressed up as Jim the Anvil Nightheart and get placed top three. So that was awesome. But to begin the night, we had the Reign of Thunder, which is new to SCW, versus the Patriots of Hope, which we both know as Bayon X and Paradox. This was just, I mean, Reign of Thunder looked good, but just could not put the Patriots of Hope down. They came in and just destroyed Rain of Thunder. I'm hoping to see more out of Rain of Thunder. Hoping to see more out of the Patriots of Hope also, though. What uh, what, what kind of um, tag team was Rain of Thunder? Were they like a new, like, were they like like rookies coming in? or You know, it was a, a younger black gentleman, a younger white gentleman. I did not catch their names. Um, obviously, I, I get distracted when I'm at those places. Mm. But they look good, young, fit, I mean, quick, strong, and I believe that they're going to be some somebody, the tag team division. The tag team division at SCW is just amazing at the moment. Um, obviously, we didn't make the show last month, so I they gave us a brief history of what happened last month. We, we both know Marche Rocket is the champion for the time being. Mm-hmm. And then the Patriots Hope won. So that was cool. Uh, next match, we had the Sheik versus the Prophet Xavier Cross, which we both know Xavier Cross from the wrestling school, and he graduated from there. Uh, Cross actually came out dressed as the Junkyard Dog, which was pretty He had the chains, and he was barking to the little, I mean, the little headbutts and everything. He came out and looked amazing. Probably the most aggressive I have seen him so far in the ring. But the Sheik just pulled it off, had a camel clutch submission. Uh, I, mean, like, I I still have a lot of faith in the Prophet, but I mean, I'm getting worried that he is yet to have his first victory. Did he not have one? I don't, was he on the card last well, month? Well, yeah. So me, if I can look at the uh, results from last month and everything, obviously we know that uh, Marche Rocket, uh, he did win. Uh, Bane X uh, won the Battle Royal that they had there last month. Uh, Lee Payne retained their titles from the family. Uh, they did have the 20-minute uh, Iron Man match between the Cobra and uh, Nick Cutler, which actually ended in a draw. Really? Yeah. So they were, um, When the family uh, Asylum, Lunatic and Lumberjack, took on the Plague, the Plague won, but the ref ended up reversing the decision after the Plague kept beating them. 
I did see the plague tonight last night too. How 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 were they in person? They are scary. There's three of them. Sure. They vary in sizes. So uh, the Patriots of Hope they uh, they beat uh, the Sheik and uh, Kalmar Grimko, which Kalmar is still my favorite wrestler. Wait. Is he was he at the show? No, no, darn. Uh, Bulletproof Industries beat Lamar Titan and Chris Miller. Uh, Max Blaylock, he faced the Prophet last month, and the Prophet lost that ma- match as well. Um, and then uh, Malix Matthews took on uh, Jack Shatter. So, I mean, like, I I love seeing uh, the Prophet in the ring. I mean, we've only, I think I've only, we've only seen two matches by him, maybe. Right. And um, so we're looking at, like, this is now his fourth time in the ring. And like, I'm sure, like, you know, from the two matches I saw of him, He's doing great. You know, he's still learning, but he's doing great. And he's facing veterans, obviously. I mean, like, all these guys. Yeah, he's not facing just your normal guys. Yeah. He's facing these guys that have been in the ring for years. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he was close to beating the Sheik. This is the most aggressive I've ever seen Xavier Cross and probably his best outing that I've that I've seen. He probably uh, dug down to find his, like, inner junkyard dog. Uh, he may need to do it again because mm-hmm. that, that just seemed to ignite something in him to make him uh, like I said he's just more aggressive and it was just awesome he was flying off the ropes doing the little dog headbutts and stuff like that she just saw an opportunity yeah. capitalized and yeah. that was the end of the story from from what from what I know or from what I've seen in wrestling um obviously you know profit has to earn his wins oh I mean, yeah, yeah you know yeah. But what worries me is like when you see young guys like this, when they take a loss after a loss, sometimes they get discouraged to the point where they'll do anything to take a win. And that may be like, you know, you know, a low blow, you know, an eye gouge, a roll up, you know, and pulling on the uh, you know, the fucking um trunks and shit. You know, sometimes it happens. I'm hoping it doesn't happen for Xavier Cross like this. I'm hoping he doesn't end up, you know, taking that heel way out and getting his first victory. Because he needs that first victory to be a like a, a pure and real victory. I, I mean, time and time again, we have said a win is a win is a win. Any win, yeah. Not the first one, though. I, Not the the first one has to be won by your own, you know, your your own, you know, knowledge and you know what you've learned in wrestling. You have to be able to if you have that first win. By a roll up or a low blow or something like that. I mean, like that that win means nothing. Well, a roll up is not illegal. Or you know, like when they pull on the fucking trunks and oh, shit. Well, you know, I mean that's I mean that's just like taking your first victory by like a count out. I mean that's I mean you I know I, I, why why a count out? A count out means you beat your opponent so bad. Any that they other any other t- win any other win yes, but not your first win. If your first win isn't by a pinfall or a submission of your so you're, opponent... You're telling me I beat the shit out of somebody so bad they can't get back into the ring after a 10 count, and that shouldn't make me feel good? No. Why? Put them into the ring and pin them. Well, no. I think I think if you take a 10... If you get counted out, that's worse than getting pinned. That's a 10 count you couldn't answer. Instead yeah, of a that's a count. horrible loss for your opponent, but that's a shitty win for you. Dude, a win's a win. It's like you might as well just handcuff him to the fucking guardrail, or duct tape his feet down. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, why? I mean, would it be even the point of having the match? You're just gonna be okay with just him standing there, unless it's a last man standing match. Throw the guy back in the fucking ring. Yeah. If you're not going for a title, you don't need a pinfall or a submission. Oh my god. Any other match, any other win? Yes, not your first win. Well, let's agree or disagree. Let's just agree you're wrong. No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I want you guys' opinion on this. Go on Facebook, go on Twitter, and you you be the judge of it. Do you feel that your first win is a win no matter what you do, or do you feel that your first win has to be by pinfall or submission? I hope they tell you you're fucking wrong. And the most likely would. I mean, there's a lot of shady people in the world, and I'm I'm gonna say like I mean, I'm, I'm assuming most of our listeners are the uh, hey a win's a win kind of group. But I'm also feeling that there are some people out there who agree with me that, you know, this guy, I mean, this is this is a product of Southland Championship Wrestling. He came from the SCW school. You know, I mean, like, people are behind him 100%. But, I mean, like, 
you can't sit there and say like, oh, I still support him if, you know, he pulls the tights or, you know, puts his feet on the rope or does a low bowl or an eye gouge, you know? And just... Until they cash a check they made off of him, then yes, they're, they're going to they're gonna do whatever they can to push the guy. Yeah. And if he wins, that's more money in their pocket, too. It's more more people brought to their it's, school. It's not it's not about it's not about money at that point. It's about the win. That's funny. That's what I'm trying to talk about. It's one win. For, but but you brought up the people who pushed him, and obviously they got they're making something off of him. No, not the not the people that pushed him. The fans, the people in the crowd. He doesn't. You don't need the fans to for anything. Yes, you do. Yeah, you need the fans for everything. Oh, Bulletproof Industries has been around for a minute. Bulletproof industries feed off hatred of people. Sounds like fun. The fans. So he can feed off the hatred of the people. Yeah, but that, that's not that's not who the prophet is. You look at this guy, like this guy is not is that he's not one to be hated by by the fans. I'm I mean, not saying he wants to be hated. I'm not saying this is what he's gonna do. I'm just speaking that if it was me, I'd get my victory any way possible. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's opinion. It's all opinion based. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I hope eventually he does get his first win. Um, who knows who that's going to be against? But I mean, I mean, he had he had so, he had a lot of competition put in front of him, and you know, like SCW didn't. I mean, they didn't do what they did with like Brock Lesnar or Ryback and everything, where they gave him like chum and you know to feed off him to get the victories. I mean, like they're they're making him earn his win. Oh yeah, he's not he's not fighting just random people. He fought at least two veterans that we know of, yep. and was it Max Baylock last time, mm-hmm. who is I believe the son of the guy we won the ringer from, or something to that fact. Maybe I'm not I sure if know, everyone knows that. But... they well, the, they had the same names, same last name. Yeah, that's all. I'm, I'm, I'm only guessing. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, I mean, like even with SCW, you know, we're still learning about that. Oh yeah. You know, what I mean, and that's the important. I mean, and that's the only downfall when it comes to indie wrestling because it's not like WWE where you could look at archive stuff. You know, it's like I mean, eventually you can find the stuff, but what helps out a lot is when you can talk to the bookers and the presidents and the owners and stuff to kind of get a feel of what's going on. But with this, at least, I mean, we're able to. We were able to know what's going on from, you know, day one of when we started. Right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, like, we, we saw Xavier in the school. We saw what he's able, you know, to do and capable of. And I think SCW knows that, too. And that's probably why he's constantly facing these veterans and, you know, not being put up against he's, somebody he's like. Gotta get the, he's got to get the learning down. Yeah. He's got to get, and who, you know, I'm pretty sure it's probably easier to learn from a loss than it is to learn from a win. One thing I think that would help him is if he could find a veteran on the roster to work with. Kind of like a guide or a... Yeah. You know, like maybe, you know, maybe he could hook up with... Um... Hmm. I don't know who you put him with to kind of learn the ropes. I would say the way how he is in the ring, the closest probably guy you'd want to mentor would probably be Lamar Titan. Got a war. Lamar would be good. Lamar, I think Lamar would be good. I think Bain X would be good. Um, I wouldn't put him with Elite Pain. I wouldn't put him anywhere near Family Asylum. Definitely not Bulletproof. But I well, think you may not have to worry about Bulletproof. We'll get we'll get further along <laughs> in that later. I think Lamar would be a good one. I would I feel like Elite Pain would be a good team to teach somebody. No. Not not the profit, not the profit, not the profit. Again, you're, again, you're looking at you're looking at fan favorite and the profit against you know, a couple couple arrogant hotheads like uh, the Elite Pain. I'm I'm a fan favorite of the Elite Pain. I love Elite Pain. Not everyone does, but I do. I'm not saying I don't love Elite Pain. But Steve was there at the show last night. Oh, Steve, do it. Yeah, he, he seemed to be doing well. His kids were in the. Little uh, Halloween costume contest. Hashtag fuck Steve. Hashtag fuck Steve. I haven't heard from Steve in a while. I, you know, maybe, maybe he's busy nowadays. Maybe, maybe he accepted defeat. Maybe he did accept defeat. Tapped him out. That's right. 
So we come to an interview where Marche Rocket comes out, starts com- commenting on the upcoming match he had that night facing the Irish car bomb. I believe it's Chris Mulligan. Uh, something Mulligan. Hmm. And then, you know, as he's trash and car bomb, car bomb comes out. Car bomb comes out. They start going back and forth. I'm sorry. Ian Danger came out. And then they, he starts trash, trashing car bomb. Car bomb comes out. All of a sudden, Gino, remember Gino? Apparently, he's got some kind of power now in the organization. You know, I remember, um, I remember watching President Keats' uh, Facebook Live video. Uh, I think it was like a week ago. It might have been last week or earlier uh, this week, where um, because of the situation with Bullproof and everything, he's actually taken himself out of uh, the show. He wasn't actually at the last show either. So I don't know if you know about this, but he wasn't at last month's show. He actually put Gino in charge of that one as well because he's having a conflict of uh, interest with um, Bulletproof. That would make sense. Yeah. So I, I thought that was kind of weird. I mean, like, not so much that he took himself out, but the fact that he put Gino in charge. Because I don't know if Gino knows how to, like, you know, run his own life. The dude's kind of fucking weird, man. He's just eccentric. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I get it. But, well, Gino came out, made this a three-way battle with Rocket versus Danger versus Mulligan. More to come on that later, obviously. And then that was over, and then we had the next match, which was, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Sombra Delgato versus Chris Classic, The Heart of Wrestling. I had, yeah, that's... That's special notes because I took pictures. I'm trying to remember because I know Gato is cat, but I can't remember what Sombra is. Well, he came out, he crawled out of the entrance, then popped up, had this little thing, these little things on his mask, like little hairs. I don't, I think we've seen him before. I just don't remember if we have. Well, I'll have to look at the pictures and everything he took that uh, we'll have. Yeah, it might not be that great. But it's fine. We'll have him post up on Instagram anyways. And maybe I mean it sounds familiar. Uh Chris Classic we've seen. And I mean Chris Classic was just blew blew me away. All over the place. Classic pulled off with the win. This match was all over I mean the ring, outside the ring. It it just seemed like a high flying night last night. Okay. A lot of over the top action, a lot of off the top turnbuckles. Um Man, it was just a hard hitting night. I I was so excited to be there. It had been a while since I've been at SCW show. So this brings us to the six man tag team match where Bulletproof Industry takes on Lamar Titan. Check this out: Doug Keast and Chris Miller. Oh, so Keast was there. Keast was there. And let me, t- you know what? I I had a chance to talk to Keast after the match, and you know it been his first wrestling match maybe in a long time, but. This man was very fluid in the ring, very technical. I don't think Bulletproof knew what they were getting themselves into, but this match right here had major implications to where if Bulletproof wins, they get control of SCW. However, if they lost, they're out of SCW. So you had Lamar, Titan, Doug Keith, and Miller, which, which makes a very... Different odd team, if you ask me. Yeah, because well, Miller, Miller is obviously the brawler. Yeah, I I don't think I've seen Miller fight since the first SCW show that we went to, when he had that uh, what did I call a street fight with uh, Andy Black. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the last time I saw him. I think if he if he fought any other time with SCW, it was during those uh, shows we weren't able to make. Right, but yeah, I mean it's definitely went out. The Doug Keys, did he happen to wrestle in his jeans and boots? Because that's the only thing I ever see him in. No, he actually had a uh, t-shirt and MMA shorts, I guess you call them. Oh, he went all out. I mean, no no boots, straight feet. I mean, he was it was so fluid and ring and like he had been in there for years. I was impressed by him. I'm sure he even shocked himself at moments. 
he just pulled off some things I, I didn't think a president of a company could do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Lamar Titan, uh, as always, is very impressive. Um, however, Bulletproof, uh, yeah, they lost. That's the end of Bulletproof Industries. Or as I like to call them, Butthole Industries. But, it, too bad, so sad. They dra- They legitly, security grabbed them, dragged them, and threw them out the front door of the second place church in Moni. Good. It was, it was awesome. Good. Now, you happen to mention... Um... Andy Black wasn't there. Yeah, I did. Andy Black wasn't there. He probably knew. He probably, he probably knew the inevitable. Hey, you know what happens when you get Instagram balls? That's true. Or is that Insta balls? Yep. Yep. You talked really tough. Uh, well, they can't online. wait to see you. Can't wait to see you. I'm going to be there. Yep. Wasn't there. His loss. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm glad Bulletproof is gone. Um, it kind of just bugged the hell out of me. You know, I, you know. It, it was interesting. You know, Bulletproof was definitely somebody you wanted to watch, and it was interesting to hear what he was going to say next. But he's kind of a dick. Mm-hmm. So, and we we happen to have a pretty good relationship with Keist. I, I, do we still call him President Keist? Oh, yeah, I do. All right, we'll still call him President. Go on, Prez. Go, Prez. Prez Keats. Prez, Prez, Prez Keats. Keats. Prez Keats. Now, I'm, the next match is for the Tag Team Championship, which we got to see the inaugural Tag Team Championship champions win their championship and have not lost it since. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that'd be Elite Pain. And a modified Rulers of Wrestling, or Row, is what they were calling each other. Um, Our star was the manager. Usually, you know, it's our star and the other guy. I don't remember the other guy's name, but they had a friend that replaced him and yeah, I believe our star uh, had an injury. Yeah, he had an injury, and probably even more so now because he did he did get pushed into a metal steel post. So, yeah, will he be in the ring anytime soon? I hope so. Um, the guest DJ from X Country was there. I don't remember his name. I think it's something Bama. Uh, I guess him and Elite Pain have been going back and forth. Well, he screws up their names, I'm sure, on purpose, trying to be funny. And then Bobby Blues, when he gets announced, comes out, he stops the whole thing, and then he announces Elite Pain the way they should be. Mm-hmm. Elite Pain comes out, and at first, uh, Ro was just hammering away, but Elite Pain, being the tag team champions they are, came back. And just destroyed Rulers of Wrestling. Took out our star on the outside. Um, you know as well as I do how hard hitting the lead paint is. Hit him with the finish. Boom. One, two, three. It was over. Elite Paint is still tag team champions. Yeah. And what's awesome is, I mean, like, they they retained those titles in the same uh, venue that they won those titles. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's got to be pretty cool for them. So the DJ was the uh, guest guest announcer for the match and everything. What what did, how did he pronounce it? Well, he called Bobby Blues, Bobby Blows, and as Alitai Pani instead of Elite Pain, and he called him Hugger Hugger Pain. And I forget how he screwed up Marco's name. And then he did it again after the match, and Elite Pain just pretty much. Beat his ass right in the middle of the ring. You, you know, yeah, those are those aren't accident no, pronunciation. No, 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 no. You can't pretty much compare Hunter Payne to Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty, if, if if Hunter is hugging you, he's probably trying to pop your head off. Bear hugs. Bear hugs. Bear hugs. I'm, I don't know who's going to beat him. I I do not know who can beat Elite Payne. Because nobody's been able to do so yet. What about, um, I mean, you've seen it more than I, but uh, what about the plague? I think the plague could uh, take on Lee Payne? The, the plague, from what I've seen so far, is pretty impressive. I think it'd be awfully close. Mm-hmm. But, you know, just a big fan of Lee Payne. Huh. Well, we can talk more about the plague uh, in the next match here. 
Oh, this yeah. one this one kind of interests me a lot. Well, this started off as supposed to be a three-way tag team battle. Oh, that's what it was interesting to me. Oh, so, so it didn't happen. No. So what, what happened was is the family, Mad Dog Ivan Man, you know, Mad Dog Ivan Manson and the face Jake Andrews, obviously with Charlie Jr. Okay. They were gonna fight the asylum, Loon, the lunatic, and Braun the Lumberjack. See, I was gonna see I was wondering how that was gonna turn out. And versus the plague. Well the plague came out, they introduced them they introduced their third member. I believe it was Ace Bradley or something like that. Scary looking dudes. Even though one guy is really big, then there's a medium guy, then there's probably their like cruiserweight guy. All pretty scary looking. Even the little guy. The little guy don't take that in offense. Uh, well, even the le- leprechaun uh, from the leprechaun movies were terrifying. He was probably like three feet tall. You know who wasn't terrifying? Who? Oh. Chuck. Never, never was afraid of him. What about, uh, what was that, Critters? The movie The Critters? Those things were terrifying. Those things were terrifying. Anyways. Anyway, anyways. So, the, you know, Gino gets out again, and the plague figures that, the, you know, they're, the family asylum, the, they're, this is a whole uh, faction together just split. So the plague was like, you know, you guys are just going to cheat. We're going to have three members. So Gino comes out. He's like, well, if you're willing to do a four-on-three, we'll do a four-on-three match. So this time I said, fine. So almost like, uh, what, the the shield. Where they take the three-on-four, three-on-five guys. Yeah, five, yeah, okay. So I'm pretty much, to me, the stack, the, the cards are stacked against the plague. Any any team that has Ivan on it uh, is pretty is pretty much one that you would think would be a sure win, except against Lee Bain because he did. Ivan looks small to the guy that was on the plate, and uh, I I wish I knew what their names were besides Ace. You know, one of them was Chris St. Michael, and I do not remember who the other guy was. Couldn't catch it. I was probably in line trying to buy a Mountain Dew or something. He had nachos? Oh, they had nachos. Nachos. <coughs> um, both teams had a great showing. The play ended up with the win. Really? Yeah. They took the victory over the four guys. They took the victory. Um, actually, and I got got to speak momentary to Lunatic afterwards, and what I could make out, um, he actually had an injury in the show. His one of his shoulders is the bone was popping up. He took a big hit, and I mean it was whatever the move was called. It it would it would have knocked out a damn elephant, you know. But the play continues to be impressive, and I I can see them facing elite pain here in the future, if not sooner. <sighs> Not uh, easy. Not no, easy not at all. It's a lot of talking. <laughs> a little parched and shit. <laughs> so that brings us to the heavyweight bottle, the triple threat match. The heavyweight bottle? Bottle. Uh, I might be thinking about the beer I'm going to drink tonight. <laughs> and that was the Irish Car Bomb versus Ian Danger versus Marche Rocket, who is, is was the current champion, I guess you could say. Okay. This match was definitely a match of the night. These three gentlemen were just leaving it all out there, all over the place. Big hits, big car bomb takes his shillelagh and just whoops the shit out of danger. Danger gets escorted to the back. So it's just car bomb and Marche rocket. And these two guys are going, we've seen them go at it before. So these guys are very familiar with each other. Going back and forth, back and forth. And finally car bomb gets... The upper hand on Rocket, and Ian Danger comes out of nowhere, back into the ring, and just snatches the victory away from Carbomb, making Ian Danger the new SCW heavyweight champion. Who's also from Green Bay. He let us know that several times. Ian Danger. But after the match, uh, Rocket and Mulligan did team up 
Tagati in danger through him out of the ring. And then a show of sign respect shook hands in the middle of the ring. This this was an amazing card and an amazing show, and I cannot wait to go back. Just like always. That's all I got. Good job, man. That's just... That's good. It sounded like an amazing show. I it sucks that I've missed it. But I mean I mean luckily I mean you're able to explain what went on and we do got the pictures that you took uh, that we're gonna post on Instagram. So absolutely amazing. It was fun. I guess it's time to ring the bell on this episode. Oh not yet. No? Well oh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's pretty funny. You you, you paused there. You gave that pause and you gave that like well, normally, you gave me that side normally I ask you if we have anything else. Oh. Because, you know, I still normally do plug, you know, the shows and the social media. Right. We could edit it. And everything like but that. But you, yeah. you don't edit my fuck-ups anymore, do you? Like, no. You, you gotta own this shit now. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, Powerhouse Wrestling put on a great show. SCW uh, show sounded amazing as well. Um, I can't wait till November to find out, you know, where these shows are going to be at next. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hopefully, you know... Get some um, responses back from other companies who want us to come out to their shows. I mean, it's, it's not even necessary that we want to do the commentary. We just want to come out to the show, maybe yeah. interview some yeah. guys. Yeah, and... oh yeah. That's the thing, like you know, because I, as much as I love doing commentary, like I don't want to, I don't want to commentate every single week for four or five different shows. You right. Know? Like you know, like I do it once in a great while. You know, we'll go out there and do this and do that. You know, with the shows, you know, get involved with them as you know, as well as having them get involved with us. But I mean, like we just want we just want to be a fan sitting in the audience watching the show. You know, we don't ask for free tickets. We don't ask for you know anything. Just say hey, you know, we just want to know where you're in shows at, so we just come out and watch it. Right. Maybe give us some time to talk to you afterwards. But that's about it. So if I mean, if you guys are out there listening, you know, of a show in the area, probably within like let's say an hour's drive of um, Kent Key, Chicago, somewhere around there, in between there. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna do an hour north of Chicago. I can do an hour north of Chicago. Yeah, I mean, the, about two hours away from Genki. Is that if you yeah. get because you're gonna be working until three thirty at some point? So yeah. So if you uh, if you know of a wrestling uh, show that's happening within a three hour dis or two and a half hour distance of uh, Genki, let us know. Hit us up on Facebook. Send us an email to. JFW Podcast at Yahoo.com. Yahoo. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook just by searching JFW Podcast. Uh, make sure you check out our website and everything, which the link to our website is on our Facebook. Um, it's also linked from my other podcast's website, this freaking show.com. Um, looks like the next SCW show is uh, November 17th. Uh, is that one going to be in Shabans? I believe this one is going to be at the C- Civic Center. Okay, so uh, November 17th, uh, Shabans. So, looks like uh, SCW's Friday, Powerhouse would be uh, Saturday. Saturday. So, that would be a tremendous weekend of uh, wrestling, fun-filled wrestling. So, make sure you check the, those shows out. Make sure you follow those shows on Facebook and everything to keep updated on all their events and everything. Um, quick, small little plug uh, for my other podcast before we uh, say our goodbyes. Is my other podcast, This Freaking Show. We hit our uh, 100th episode uh, this week. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, We just released that show today as well. So if you uh, you are a fan of Travesty and you want to hear non-wrestling related shit, which if you listen to a wrestling podcast, you probably don't. But uh, check out uh, This Freaking Show and check out our 100th episode. And if you like it, there's 99 other episodes like it. You got anything else? Nothing else for me. Time to ring the bell this episode. Perfect. As always, I am Travis D. I'm Dizzle J. Thank you for listening to another episode of Just Freaking Wrestling, the JFW Podcast. Peace.